Well, good morning or good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you are calling in from. I want to welcome you to the Finance of America Renovember. This is a series of webinars we're doing for you to talk about renovation loan products that are available with Finance of America. And today we're talking about renovation made simple with our FAM Reno Project Manager. And I'm very excited to share the information about this exciting new program today. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you all can hear us. So if you can um, get in, get onto by speaker or by, you can call in and listen to us. So those are two different ways that you can listen. Um, if you have questions today, this is a very popular webinar. I'm excited to have so many of you on the webinar today. And you can ask questions, but you can do that two different ways. First of all, you can type in the chat box or you can type in the Q&A box. And let's go ahead and test for sound that you can hear us and let me know how your weather is. For those of you who are on the webinar, you know I always ask about the weather. I was actually in Colorado for the past few days and it snowed like crazy. In fact, 18 inches um, were <laughs> it's what happened up in the mountains. We didn't have that much down in Denver. We were like, it was three inches, so it wasn't bad. And uh, yes, Cal Southern California, Northern California friends, we are thinking about you. Be safe. Um, and uh, it sounds like things are slowing down for the fire in, in uh, Southern California, which is great news. But we do think about you and send you our thoughts and prayers. So it looks like you all know how to ask questions and you can hear me. So let's get started. Um, first of all, this training is not just about you all as far as being originators, but also being able to share information and train and educate your real estate partners. And so what we're doing for you this month in our Renovember month is doing a training for your real estate partners. And so on Thursday, November 28th, we are doing a renovation home, home loan training for realtors. And we are providing you with some resources to be able to invite them to this webinar and let us do the training for you. So we have a customizable flyer that you can drop your logo, drop your contact information, take it to your real estate offices, and uh, have them get registered for the webinar. And then I've also put together just email instructions that you can copy and paste into a web, uh, just an email for you to send out to invite them to the webinar. We also have handouts for today's information. I'm actually going to post that right now. So we have uh, Getting Started with the 203K Guide that we've created. goes through step-by-step -step what you need to do to get educated, to get marketing material, um, to know how to get um, through the renovation loan process. We also have the flyer, which is the webinar flyer, and then also the email instructions. So I'm posting all of those right now in your chat panel. You can click on each of those links and download it. I'm also going to be emailing all this information out to everyone tomorrow. So you'll get a copy to all the links for all the handouts we're covering. And then I'm also recording this webinar. So if you um, want to go back and listen to it or you want to send it to somebody else, you can do that. So those are our housekeeping things that we had to get through. So let's go ahead and get started and let me introduce you to our panelists today. My name is Ginger Bell. I'm an education specialist. I uh, do a lot of the training for Finance of America. And with me today I have William Brown, who is the National Renovation Sales Manager for Finance of America, and uh, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, a lot of different people on 203K during my time in the industry, and I can tell you, William Brown is the real deal. This guy eats it, sleeps it, breathes it, knows it, so um, having the opportunity to work with you, William, um, in creating our renovation um, training and guides and everything this month has been fantastic. So thank you so much for your expertise and your passion for this great product. No, you're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. I'm probably happier about it than you are. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> we've been doing renovation loans for a while and, you know, there's always that very first thing that goes into the thought process as far as um, what it goes about putting together a renovation loan. And, and so, you know, why, do, why is it that people don't sell more renovation products? So I think, you know, partially it's, it's contraction and lenders that do them. So there aren't a lot of lenders that do them. So people don't have a lot of experience. 
And I know as, as salespeople, we don't like to be exposed trying to sell something we don't understand or we don't feel like we get support. Like I have, we're Marines in my family, so like we run toward trouble, which is how I wound up being a renovation specialist. Because prior to what Ginger is going to tell you today, every other lender uses an archaic process that doesn't support sales. It doesn't have enough operational support or expertise. And I don't think they really understand it. And then their realtors don't want to promote it. So it's the whole thing is just kind of a mess that we're trying to fix. Next. I think. Um, well, and I think really, too, you have a great story that talks about a fishing story. And I always love a good fishing story. Because when you think about a renovation prod project, it really is. It's that big fish. It's like, what do I do with it? And you have a great story that I think really relates to it. So, yeah, what, what happened when I was younger, I did a lot of canoeing and, and backcountry camping. And I went on a trip in college with, uh, with college kids. And we had to go a big loop. It was probably about 90 miles by canoe from one point to another point to get our ride home. And we didn't have guides. We had maps and compasses and lots of water. And we, you know, had some food. We fished a lot. We fished for small fish, like pan fish and crappies, about as big as a man's hand, not really big fish. Was what we, weren't, we, weren't, we didn't have tackle for that. So one evening we had had a, the fight, a fight amongst ourselves, and one of the guys was sure we were lost, and he was having a really hard time with it. And the other six of us were sure we were not lost, so he lost the vote. And as a result, he was pouting, and he went out by himself while we set up camp to sort of fish and collect himself. And about 20 minutes after he disappeared, we're setting up camp, and we hear this guy screaming from out on the lake, Help! Help! And we look out there, and his canoe is like bow up to the sky. His rod is bent over almost half, and he's headed out to the river. So we thought, that's weird. So we jumped in our other two canoes. We paddled out to get him, and we got a fish about as big as this fish that he just barely snagged by the gill. Like he, this, this old man fish was not going to be caught by his little lure. He just happened to snag him by the gill. And it was a great northern, and it was about four and a half feet long <laughs> and about eight inch, nine inches wide, just like the one in the picture. There, this guy's happy because he's obviously fishing for that. Matt was not fishing for that. And I think that's what happens to a lot of salespeople when they catch a 203K loan because they're not prepared and they haven't done any training and they've kind of ignored it. And then all of a sudden their preferred realtor shows up in their office and I got this 203K, can you do it? And they right. go into cold sweat and absolute panic. Yeah, and, and it is that feeling definitely. It's like, oh my gosh, I've got this big fish on, where do I start? And sometimes people just walk away from it yep. and maybe don't consider the 203K because they don't have an understanding for it. They don't know where to go to get help from it. And that's the great thing with FAM is we can provide a lot of that help and support. So when you're talking about the challenges of the 203K, you know, what are some of those challenges that we face? So the first is, you know, everybody, nobody, there seems to be some confusion about what can be done and what can't be done. And so I want to simplify that for you guys. It, there's two versions of the 203K. There's a cosmetic one, and there's a frame-off overhaul one. Okay, so we have a limited cosmetic frame-off. That's the standard. The biggest difference is the, the maximum the ceiling on the expenses for the, the limit is about $30,000 in, in total budget for repairs because we finance a lot of other things. And so... It's not 31, people think it's 35,000, but it's really not. It's closer to 31,000, maybe 29,000 if there's a 15% contingency reserve. You can do anything up to anything structural on a limited 203K and landscaping. You can't do landscaping, can't do structural stuff. But if it's not those two things, you can do it. And then on the standard, the simplest way to think about that is that, that dude, I can tear the house down to the ground and rebuild it on the same foundation. Okay, that's the bucket. So you can do anything else. And, it, and it, as long as it's inside the county limit. So the county limit becomes a limiting factor for the standard. So that's how I think about it. Simply, you know, when realtors come with me, different things, can you do mold? What about water remediation? They got an oil tank. You know, they need a roof. They need some tuck pointing on the chimney, whatever. The answer is yes, you can do that. That's what the loan is designed for. And then people are afraid of the maximum mortgage worksheet, um, which, which is really a consumer-facing tool. You have to, you have to, have to, have to use every time you want to think about doing a renovation loan. If you don't use it, you will run the risk of understating things or not giving your borrower enough information. And remember, they know nothing about this loan. So they come to you as their mortgage expert and you tell them something. And then when you actually get into the paperwork and your LOS or the sp spreadsheet that we, we built and you present the real deal to them, 
they don't trust you as much because the numbers are changed and they're different. Okay, so you got to use the worksheet. And I go through that. I try to make it as simple as possible, line by line, explain it to them. But you also look like a rock star when you explain the worksheet to them because this generation of home buyers and homeowners, they really want to, they really want to understand this stuff. And so if you explain it to them, your competition probably did not, and you look like a rock star. And they'll be, have a lot more confidence, and it's easier to get a confident borrower through the transaction than one who's suspicious and anxious about you and the deal. And then the third part that always stumbles people is like, how do I get this stuff done? It's not revenue generating experience. Project management for renovation loans is not your day job. It's probably beyond your experience unless you've been building stuff. It's just too much stuff and it's too different. You can't learn it. And so that's where we come in, right? Um, we solve those three things, which makes it a lot easier to sell the product. We have dedicated people for the project management part, which is huge. Right. So, you know, a lot of lenders, too, don't have uh, the support and the staff to be able to work on renovation loans. And so right. what, yeah. you know, most lenders use a typical DE underwriter, right? Yeah, and that's like, man, that's like the cat on the hot tin roof. It, it is not, it is so far out of, outside of a DE's, DE underwriter's comfort zone to be faced with underwriting a 203K that you are, I guarantee, if they will underwrite it, and some of them won't touch it, which means it sits like in this pile for a long time because they're, even though the company does it, William, the underwriter, doesn't like them and doesn't feel comfortable doing them, so I'm going to do the other stuff first. And fortunately enough, there's a lot of other stuff I can keep doing. So your rental loan, my turn time might be four days on a regular conventional 30, might be three days. On your rental loan, it might be two weeks because I really don't want to pick it up. And I don't want to pick it up because I don't know. I don't, it's just, it just makes me uncomfortable. Like they don't know how to do it. Think about it, guys. Most DE underwriters have grown up in the mortgage business. Pushing paper, not swinging hammers. They don't know what a bid is. They don't know what contractor language, how to understand it. it, it, just, it it's a really poor use of their time. They're experts in risk management, but they're not expert in construction management. And, and that causes a lot of, it's a ripple effect that goes through the industry, that the loans are hard to do, they're impossible to do, you get all kinds of crazy conditions, you never get them closed. Because they don't really want to close it, because there are some ideas on it, and what if it's wrong, right? So that's part of, that's a big part of the problem, I think. Right, which makes FAM such a great partner, because at Finance of America, we do rental rights. Absolutely. Um, we, we, you know, my job really is to make sure that everybody working on a renovation loan has the best experience possible. So that's my sales, the borrower, the builders, the realtors, the HUD consultants, everybody. So we are constantly looking at the whole process end to end, trying to figure out, is this the best way to do this for their experience that allows us to be compliant, produce a loan that's insurable, and, and make sure that people want to talk about it and refer it to their family and friends. Right, making it simple, yep. which brings us to our FAM exclusive program that I am so excited to be able to introduce. And I know this has been in a while in the making, but really putting that right team together. And what FAM has been able to put together is the Reno FAM Project Manager. So I'm going to let you walk us through what this looks like. Okay. So what's going to happen is... <clears throat> Uh, the project manager is, is really the kind of like, excuse me, my, my friend, it's the butts in the seat response to the, the project. They're usually, companies don't have enough people with enough expertise to do the work, right? So the project manager, they're, they're responsible for all the activities necessary to deliver what, what I call the renovation loan package, right? Which is all the documentation for the, loan, for the renovation part, not the credit, because there's some credit package, which is all your income asset conditions, and then there's the rental package, which is all of your bids, work write-up, appraisal, um, permits, contract review, all that stuff, which are, which are not revenue-generating activities, which are, like I said, outside your regular day job of activities, right? So that's huge that, that they will do that. They come right in and, and partner with your processor who's going to get the credit package together. And, and so the processor is getting the credit package, credit conditions done, and the rental project manager is getting the rental conditions done and they meet together and go back to the underwriter for clear to close. Next. Right. So so here's when they come in, right? So we underwrite the file first. It's a it is a financial transaction ultimately. If you can think about it like a financial transaction that anchors you to the worksheet, 
and you're really working on the numbers, which should be inside your comfort zone, right? You, you want a mortgage of 300,000, that's your number, okay? You bought it for 220, all right? I do the worksheet, you're gonna spend 60 on it, so you're still inside your $300,000 number. We get those numbers together, we get the, you know, the, the we have a skinny list of, of documents we need to make a credit decision, you send it in, you'll, you'll send it to your wholesale op center, they will scrub it and get back to you if it's not right. If it's right, they'll release it to us. We will underwrite it. Once we once it's underwritten, then the project manager will set up a call first with you and your ops, your your processor, to talk about the loan and the process and what's going to happen. And then they will call. They will talk to the consumer and basically guide the consumer to produce the documentation they need to complete the Reno package. And they're going to collect and verify all the Reno specific conditions. They're 100 percent responsible for that. They will also re-disclose the loan as necessary. And rental loans get disclosed often lots of times in the process because things keep changing. Okay, and then once, once, once they have the credit package together from your processor and all those credit conditions are checked off and their rental conditions are checked off, they submit it back to, to the underwriter for clear to close and then they submit the package to closing, which we also do in-house um, so the loan then closes. So really, this is an opportunity for you as originators to think about promoting this, especially with your real estate partners, to say you have a team that's going to go through that entire process. They, they know how to complete the information. They know what needs to be included on a bid. They need to know what needs to happen as far as all the work that needs to be done, when it needs to be done. So making sure that all of those I's are dotted, T's are crossed at the beginning of the transaction, mm -hmm. through the transaction, and then at the closing of the transaction. Right. So really what you're getting, guys, by using Finance of America for your renovation projects is you're getting an entire team who's going to help you to get this loan done, which is usually why most people stay away from two or three K's because they just don't know. Like you say, you don't, you know, you don't do the bids. You don't know what goes into those contracts. You don't know. And so having that support to be able to work with your realtors, first of all, and keep them happy, but also working with your customers and being able to let them know that you have this entire team to help them through that process. And, you know, it's not just for purchases, it's also for re refinance as well. And then we're going to talk about some incredible statistics that you have when we get lit, uh, through the, the presentation later on. But, you know, I just want you guys to think about, okay, when you're making your plans for your promotions and your marketing and the things that you're doing, put the 203K in there. Because, first of all, it's going to make you stand out. And we know that's important right now in our market today. Second of all, you know you have the support behind you of a team that knows what the heck they're doing. So you can go and get those loans with confidence, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. So let's go through what that rental process looks like in a little more detail. Okay. So on the blue is you guys, and the orange color is going to be us, our wholesale ops, and the rental unit. Okay. So First thing, first things first, do the training. It's on FAMU. There's materials that Ginger created and sent to you to tell you if you're not already registered with us, how to get registered. If you haven't logged into FAMU, how to log in, and you can scroll down and find the training. And it's, it's basically me talking through slides and a test at the end. Okay, it is completely open book, but you will need to get the our product guidelines and a copy of the maximum mortgage worksheet, which are also available through FAMU. So everything you need is in FAMU. That should be your one stop shop for resources you know before you call your AE check FAMU because you might find what you need there and then you can follow up with them all right so that's you guys and then you're going to pre-qual your borrowers and I think if you want to grow your rental business every pre-qualification you do has to involve a reno conversation what are you going to do about fixing up the house that you find because everybody's going to fix up the house they're all going to spend anywhere from 10 to 20 or more thousand dollars in the first couple of years of living on the house, help them recognize that at the beginning so they get the right mortgage. I mean, you hurry up and close them as a conventional loan or a regular FHA loan, and then they're into their credit or their retirement or their cash or their money from family or friends to fix up the house and do things that the house needs. So add that to your pre-qualification, do the worksheet with them, it frees them up to shop because if I really understand that I can build a budget into my purchase, then 
I, I have a lot more options as a, as a consumer when I'm shopping, okay? And if you get questions about the, the scenario that you don't know, check with your AE first. We've been training them and working with them, and, and they're really sharp, and they get it, and they understand it, and they have us behind them as well if they can't answer your question. But run your scenario questions by them, and they should be able to help you, you know, get that together. Then you originate your file, and they find an offer, or they sign their intent to proceed, and you submit it. Okay, there's a checklist of documents we have. Again, your AE can help you that. He can review your, your file, talk you through your first one or two so you know what we want. And once we get it, we're going to underwrite it. I think we're like 72, 96 hours on the initial underwrite right now. And, and that will get you your conditional commitment. Well, actually, before that, the disclosures go out, and then we get it, right? So that's an, I put that in the wrong order. I'm sorry. We're going to get your file. We're going to disclose it. Then we're going to underwrite it. And then... Then the project, then there's nothing for you to do. You're just waiting for us, okay? So once your files come to us and we've accepted it, we've disclosed it, we've underwritten it, the next, the ball's in our court. So maybe a day or two before the project manager calls you, but she will call you, and I say she because I have two, and they're both ladies right now. Um, she will call you and arrange a call between you, your processor, the AE, and me if I'm available, and, and she'll just go through kind of a standard checklist of here's the loan, here's what has to happen, here's the process. Here's our timeline. They will send you know, a, a calendar after they talk to the borrower. Don't panic when you get the calendar. Um, it is really just like I've, I've seen about 7,000 Ks go through my op center here and other places, right? So we just put together a project calendar that says this is likely what's going to happen, allowing X amount of days for the borrower to get their bids together, time for the appraisal, time for conditional review and clearing and then drawing docs. And, but just know we're like 10 days from when you want to close, we got to be clear to close. So the calendar reflects all that, right? And it goes to you, it goes to the borrower, it goes to both realtors. So everybody knows who's doing what and where we are. Um, and then, then after that call, those two calls, one to you and your processor, one to the borrower, your processor is working on the credit conditions to complete the credit package, and the reno project manager is working on all the reno conditions to complete the reno package. And depending on which version of the K you have, one's more comp the standard is more complicated than the limited. It'll take longer to get that package together because you involve a HUD consultant and a longer bid process than a stand than limited, which might just be a roofer, an HVAC guy, like simple bids. Okay. Once we get the bids, we order the you're out, you're just chilling now. You you're working on your credit package. We're working on the rental package, and then we're going to order the appraisal when we have completed bids. We're going to redisclose as necessary. We will, we will then collect the credit package. You know, the project manager will look at it, put it together, and then submit it for, um, for closing. We close the loan, you get paid, okay? And the realtors get paid. We set up an escrow for the borrower, and you can go fishing if you want. I recommend you go get more business, so you should have done that up after you uploaded the file to FAM. You should be looking for new business, because now this one's, this one's perking. You don't have to worry so much about it. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to manage the renovation project through to completion. So there will be a warm handoff, a congratulatory note from our closer, telling them that the escrow administrator will be in touch with them. And usually within a day or so, the escrow administrator who's loaded it into their pipeline and got their, hand, their brain around the project reaches out to the borrower, does a call, explains the draw process, the timelines, what has to happen. We try to get the borrower and the builder on the same call so that we can explain it to everybody. And then basically it's customer service. They're finishing the build. We're releasing the money. And it, it, most of the time, it works really well. So we have a question that kind of relates to this whole process as far as the contractors. And the question is, how do we locate and coordinate with reputable contractors? Oh, my favorite question. Well, one of my favorite <laughs> questions. So here's the deal, guys. Um, locating and coordinating reputable contractors is not a revenue-generating activity. I do not recommend salespeople do it at all. It's really the consumer's responsibility to find their contractor. Every agency that sponsors a renovation loan puts the burden for, the, for identifying and selecting a contractor squarely on the borrower's plate. And if you or me or any other of the experts in the process, realtors, um, suggest a contractor to a borrower, their brain shuts off. They don't do their due diligence. And what I've seen from, like I said, managing 7,000 more through our op center and all the way into the escrow phase is when, when they're having a fight with their contractor, Nine times out of ten, when we say, where did you get your contractor from, they're going to say, my realtor or my loan officer recommended them, all right? And now they're having a fit, and they're having a fight, and they're firing their contractor, and their deal's off the rails. So we're going to put together a flyer 
But basically the consumer, if they're gonna do a renovation loan, they have to act like they own the home already. And you have to help them do that, right? Because once they own the home, once they close, like if you close somebody in a conventional 30 and they call you two months after the loan closes and tell you that their kitchen pipes are broken and, and what can you do for them, what are you gonna say? Call a contractor, right? You're not a plumber. You're, you're like, why are you calling me, right? So it's the same thing up on the front end. I need them to act like they own the house. And so, you know, we point them toward homeadvisor.com, house, Angie's List, Remodelers Connection, the Home Improvement Network. There's lots of online resources that they have to be able to just Google, bing. Like, I need to remodel a kitchen, my zip code, enter. They'll get a list of builders in their area. And you really have to help them, like, kind of grow up and do this work because it just handicaps them when we hand them the contractor. So part of that process and, and you know, maybe thinking about um, in terms of marketing, and that's what I always do when I look at this. I go, okay, I've got this great product. What can I use to market myself? Mm -hmm. And one of the things maybe that you can do, and I know, Richard, you asked the question, is to write an article on how to find a good contractor and maybe put, linking some of those sites that William's talking about. And then, you know, what are the top things, things to look for? First of all, are they licensed? Are they bonded? Are they qualified? See what reviews that they have. So instead of steering them towards a particular contractor, giving them the information that they need to think about when they're selecting a contractor. So that's what I would recommend. Right. And that's a great article. Put an article like that out on social media. Those are things that are good to put out there. And then you position yourself and say, hey, are you looking to do uh, uh, to renovate your home? Are you looking to fix up your existing home? Are you do you want to do some improvements to a home that you're buying? You can do it. It's a renovation loan. Call me about it. So think about turning it a little bit in that requ uh, regards. Right. Um, and a question on that: um, Steve's asking are the requirements the contractor are there are there requirements a contractor needs to meet. Yeah, we have we have actually send out a contractor package when we when the borrower identifies a contractor. We want to know, you know, if they're licensed according to the re license requirements. Um, they they don't usually have to be bonded for rental loans, but sometimes they'll be licensed and bonded. They have to have insurance. We check their references, trade references, and customer references. And I mean that's kind of the basic stuff. We're just trying to figure out, you know, and with, we don't pull their credit. We don't do a Lexis Lexis Nexus review on them. We send them a simple form. Where do you bank? What are your trade references? Can you give us some past customers? We call them and ask them, would you recommend Brown's construction again? Right? right. So that's Which is important. Yep. So we're getting a couple questions in as far as turn times. What's the approximate turn time to close a renovation loan? So I, our average is right around 52 days right now. And that's for, for all the products that, we, that go through our op center. So usually you want to look at at least a 45-day contract for a limited and a 60-day contract for a standard. It tends to avoid the drama. The 30-day contract guarantees heartburn and drama because right. there aren't enough working days to get the work done. And it's, again, it's just all in how you set it up with your customer to let them know, you know, this is a great opportunity for you to wrap in the cost of renovating the loan, the, the home into the loan, and so it's going to take a little bit longer. There's a few more steps. We want to make sure we're covering you. So that just positions you. And, and be strong with your realtors, too, because, you know, they're going to push you, and they're going to want to close, and you know the market's shifting a little bit now. It's becoming more of a buyer's market, which is helpful. And so you just need to let them know that in order to be able to get this done, you need that timeline. So I know it's always a difficult conversation to have, but you know just reassure them you're going to get it done, and this is how you're going to get it done. So it's set it up right when you set it up, and that will make your life a lot easier. Right. You know, one of the things I love, William, is the fact that Finance of America provides end-to-end -end customer care. So not only are they including you and your customer and your realtor in the loop as far as everything that happens in the beginning and the middle, but also all the way through till the, the renovation is complete, right? Yeah, and our, and our customers like that. I know from Actually, I did escrow administration for a while, and, and I talked to the people that do it now, and the customers are so, they just like being with the same team through the whole thing, right? So from the time the project manager talks to them, they basically are in our ops center. And, and so um, it, it, just, it just simplifies the customer experience, 
Now, a lot of customers really have a bad feeling about because they don't understand the mortgage business and mortgage securitization. They really don't like they sold my loan. Man, my loan hadn't even closed and they sold it. I'm talking to somebody else, right? So our guys on the renovation side, they're with us. They may be with us for a year or longer, um, still talking to the same mortgage company. The servicer may change, but the people they talk to hasn't changed. Right, and I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. So working with Finance of America provides you with that unique value-added process with the approach, the management, the accessibility, the end-to-end -end customer care, right? Yeah, that's really true. I, I just think it's common sense to have enough people with the right expertise to do the work. It just simplifies it. And so we've, I've been fortunate to be able to, to structure operation centers in the last decade that, that focus that way. And, we, and I guarantee you, when I used to originate, nobody ever told me thank you when I got their 203K loan closed. Like for three years, nobody ever told me thank you. And a lot of realtors didn't talk to me anymore because it was, ter it was horrific. We get cards. We get people want to give us gifts. They send us emails. I get phone calls from customers because it works. Like they, the customer understands it when there's enough people that can actually do the job because everybody knows when you're over when you're in over your head. And our customers aren't stupid. And so if they happen to be doing a loan with somebody, and one guy who's like a one-arm paper hanger, and then these impossible credit conditions that they keep getting from their underwriter who really doesn't want to close the loan, like they see that. <laughs> And they know it. Right? Yeah, a, a one-arm paper hanger. That is a, that is a new term that I have learned today. Oh yeah, you should try it. If you've ever hung wallpaper, anybody out there who's ever hung wallpaper, you you understand immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, the other advantage too is minimal overlays, right? Yeah, our overlays are it's it's a HUD loan, so our underwriters are committed to. They, they, we will go to the mat if we can insure the loan. If we can get it closed. We've got a lot of expertise looking at income, assets, right? As long as it meets the basic, you know, you're in the ball game with your minimum FICO of 640 for your standard, 620 for your limited, and you got funds to close, then we're going to work on the other stuff, right? We don't have any other overlays. Our concern is that we have to be able to insure the loan. And if we can insure it and it meets our guidelines, we're going to close it. Yeah. The max EPI is 51. We can go slightly higher with compensating factors, and they are in the product guidelines what those factors are. And then the underwriting is common sense. We try and work, we try and understand that these are real people, this is their lives, and, and there's not a cookie cutter approach to looking at their income stream and their assets, right? So. It really works. Hey, I'm seeing a couple of you guys raise your hands, and so, I mean, I'm not physically seeing you that, but I'm seeing you raising your hands through the platform. Um, but if, uh, if you do have questions, please type them in the chat box, type them in the Q&A, and we'll make sure and get to those as well. And, uh, and so, you know, moving on as far as just, you know, looking at that, and again, put that marketing hat on. You guys are thinking about what are the ways that you can do to get more business, new business, stand out. Um, rental products are completely underutilized. They really are. And, you know, I look, every time I look at the HUD data and the HUD insured two or three, endorsed two or three K loans, and it, it's a diminishing number, and you can sort of plot it over the last 10 years, from the heyday of plus 20,000 units to down like now we're on the 12 or 13. And you can see it when the big banks pulled out, when Wells pulled out, Bank of America pulled out, the big lenders went down, Countrywide went down, like the originations went off. So there's a void there and a lot of lenders don't do them. And so then a lot of outlets for brokers don't take them, right? So, so there's still fewer lenders. So you guys are fortunate. We do them, we want the business, we think it's great business, we structure ourselves to be able to excel at it, all right? And it's good for purchases, and it's great for refinances. If you guys have been in business for a long time and have a book of business, you know, a database of customers, look at this. This is from House, okay? This just came out. I, got, I think I got it in the mail last, last month. One in three home buyers pull out their credit cards to finance their upgrades. House actually interviewed, surveyed 10,000, almost 11,000 homeowners. That's a third of them paid for their renovations on credit cards. Some of those people are in your database, okay? They don't know that there's a renovation refinance option out there, but they do know they need an HVAC or a kitchen or they need to get the carpet out or the door doesn't work anymore, the garage door is broken or the foundation's cracked. They know all those things, and so they're going to go do what people do is they're going to go pay for the solution. You should be talking to them. You should be in front of them. There's a couple flyers in our 
FAMU that you can send to your borrowers. If you need other ones, we can customize some for you to get, to get it out there so you can have a campaign and be in front of them. Refi and renovate, right? Look at that number. They, they paid between $10,000 last year. That's average, okay? That's what HUD said. And they say it's ten to 20000 in the first two years you live in your house. So these guys say the average was $10,000 in 2017. Half of that was on their card. The other half was my toys, if it was me. I had to spend $5,000 of my cash, which I would have spent on toys on my house. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> so we're getting some questions in on refinance. And um, we have done a refinance to renovate webinar and not too long ago. So I will include that, which has the particulars as far as LTVs, what you can do, you know, mm -hmm. cat, you know things like that. So I'm going to include that because I know you're asking um, Tammy a couple of particulars on refinance. And so the goal of this webinar was not to give you the details as far as, you know, the LTVs and qualifications and all that. We have training available on FAMU that we have done in the past and we will continue to do. So I'm going to send you some access to that. You can always contact your Finance of America account executive for any particulars that you have as well. So I do see a question on Jumbo, any Jumbo over high balance being rolled out. Um, especially for our friends in California that need some higher loan amounts. So anything you know about that? So we, we do lend, this is a high balance product. It's FHA loan. So if you're in a high balance FHA community, it's in there. Um, I mean, it's eligible. We don't have a specific non-FHA jumbo product. It's, I've been trying to get one for years, but you've got to get all the capital markets and secondary marketing and investor stuff worked out to do that. So we do do 203K to the high balance limits. Um, all over the country where there's high balance, high balance counties. Perfect. And I'm getting a question, are we going to send, us, send out guidelines or a matrix? We weren't planning on sending out guidelines or a matrix. Um, your account executive has access to that material, so I would recommend getting together with them um, to go through those. William, if you have a particular you know, link you want to send me, I can send it out in a follow-up follow email, but really you want to work with your Finance of America exam can accept and they can get you that. So we have um, hundreds of people in um, our California um, area who obviously are affected by homes that are burned down. Yes. So, you know, we are going to be looking at rebuilding those areas. Would this product be a good product for that? So the, the problem will be, the only problem with the 203K is that they have to use 100% of the existing foundation. So if the foundation was damaged because the fire was too hot and it broke the cement, it wouldn't be eligible. Right. Um, and usually we can put it together with the insurance money. A lot of times people are underinsured or, you know, the insurance doesn't actually cover, I guess it's still underinsured, so it won't cover the, the replacement of their property if it's still partially it's damaged, but still part of it's still standing. And so then we can work with them to combine the K with the insurance settlement. So, that's, you know, and I think that's the thing as we look into these areas and, and uh, especially that are in Northern and Southern California, um, work with your account executives to go through what are the requirements. So when you're doing a standard, the rule is they have to use the existing foundation. So house can be completely torn down, it can be gone, but the foundation has to be what they build from, right? Right. Yeah, and then some of the fires were hot enough that they burned the house and they didn't actually break the foundation because they were so quick, from what I understand. But some of them were, in, it just depends on what kind of foundation it was and how hot the fire was for how long. Yeah. So something, if you're in those areas, to talk to your account executive, and that may be something to, you know, if you have a database in the area, to work through. So I'd recommend doing that. So let's talk about training and marketing material because we have a lot out there, right? Yep, there's a lot. It's all on, the, on FAMU. Uh, there's flyers. You can see the flyers through the banner there. There's a 203K. There's some options. There's a refi to renovate. A couple of their flyers on that. And Ginger told me something earlier this week that you can turn those into JPEGs and put them in your emails, which I thought was really cool. Um, never thought about that before, but that's a good way to get the flyers into your email to send to people so they'll open it up and see it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of material. We can still make more. We, so we're a little handicapped on material because we're doing a massive migration from platforms. And a lot of our stuff that we originated for 203K is 
in Q to be trans. Yeah, there's like 10 flyers up there though, William, and there's also a variety of courses. There's a 203K certification course. Right, right. And so in your guide, which I've posted in the chat panel, there are instructions on how to get onto FAMU and how to locate that training, how to locate those flyers. So I'd recommend getting started there and again, work with your account executive and that's really where it starts. Where do you get started? First of all, contact your Finance of America account executive. Register at FAMU. Complete the 203K certification training. William has a complete training that goes through your guidelines, goes through your matrix, goes through how to fill out the max mortgage worksheet. And you can do that at your pace. So it's available online 24-7. You can log in. You can get started on it. You can walk away, go grab some chicken wings, come back, whatever you want to do. Um, but complete that 203K certification training and then get the flyers. Get out there and start promoting it. And, and to think about the ways that you can use this product to promote your business. I have a friend who several years ago, I helped him create a renovation website and it just talks about renovation home loans and, you know, how to go and pick a contractor and how it works and, and through that website, which he's had up, gosh, I think probably about seven years now, he gets over 300 leads a month and there's a very small percentage of that that are actually 203k loans, but there are a lot that go into other loan products. And I know, William, you don't want to hear that, but it is a way for no, I you get I get to it. promote it. I mean, it's like, <laughs> guys, selling renovation loans will help you grow your business. So I want you to think about what you can do. And, you know, I use the term edu marketing, and I actually was um, at a, a training yesterday for another client, and they were using the term. And uh, I've been using that term for a long time, you know, William, about as far yeah. as edu marketing. So it's using your expertise, things like this, on a product like this, to market yourself as an expert, as someone who can do that in your field. So I want you to think about getting the flyers. If you want to do do a webinar, do a webinar like what we're doing. Invite to the webinar we're having. You know, put things out there on social media. I threw out a challenge to the Finance of America account executives to talk to all of you originators about doing your own renovation kind of a show where, you know, it doesn't have to even be a full show, but if you get one of these loans in, Sit down with a video with your borrowers and interview them. Talk to them about, you know, what are you looking for? You know, what are you going to do to this home? What is the process? And do little segments where maybe you go out and, you know, watch them picking out contractors. You can look at them getting the work done. And you don't have to do the videotaping. You know, there's universities or schools in your area that you can probably hire someone or have them do an internship to do that. But put together a home show where you follow them through the process. And then when they go by the home, you're with them as they go into the home. As those, um, you know, things are being done as far as any of the renovations. And, and then the, the after effect. Make a little video for them. It doesn't have to be long. It can be just a couple minutes. And put your branding on it. And then give that to them because what are they going to do? They're going to post that on social media. So instead of just putting out there, hey, I closed another loan today, this gives you something to be able to involve your customers and make it to where it's about them. It's not about you. It's about them. And you know I always say, Unfortunately, in the world that we live in, in mortgages, there's nothing sexy about mortgages. People don't wake up in the morning and go, oh my gosh, I really want to get a mortgage today. <laughs> but there's hundreds of these home remodel shows on TV. So put yourself in the middle of it. Start your own show. And here's the thing, and I put this out there for our account executives, and I'll put it out here for all of you that are on this webinar too. I'm an education specialist, so I develop training. And I do a lot of videos. I do a lot of social media. That's what I do for my clients. So the first person that's on this webinar, send me an email. You have my email. I'll send it up in a follow-up too. 
if you get a customer that can go through this process and you get the videos, I will edit it for you. I will make it all sexy and cool and all that other kind of stuff. Put your logo in it and give it to you. And if you're interested in learning how to do that kind of stuff, let us know because those are the kind of things we can do some other things for as well besides the guidelines. So if that sounds like something that you all would like to do, to use this to market and position yourself, then let me know. Type in your chat box, type in your QA. Yes, Ginger, we'd like to see that. Um, we're up for the challenge, the video challenge, I want my show, whatever it is. But you guys have got to think about ways to stand out. And in my opinion, the renovation product is one of the best ways to do that. So I want you to think about that. Let me know if we have any other questions. I think we've kind of been taking questions as we go along here. Mm -hmm. And if you do have any other questions, by all means, type them in there. And, uh, and let us know what else you need. You know, we want to make sure that we are giving you the information that you need to get going. So I'm saying I started the webinar late, didn't get your name, number, or email. So I will send you a follow-up email, Sandra. My name is Ginger Bell. An education specialist in the mortgage industry. We have William Brown. We will send you our contact information and, um, and want to make sure to, uh, to keep you in the loop on all of that. So here's your follow-up. We have our uh, webinar coming up that we're doing for your realtors. All you have to do is invite them and say, hey, I have a, a partner, a mortgage partner that I work with. They're doing training on the renovation home loan product. I want to invite you to the webinar and send out an inv invitation for them to attend the webinar. We've made it very simple for you to do that. We have a customizable flyer. You can drop your logo in there. You can drop your information in there. You can email the instructions to them. But we just wanted to be able to do this so you can start getting your name and letting your realtors know that you can do this loan. So our follow-up information, we have the Getting Started with the 203K Guide. We have the webinar flyer, and we have the email instructions. I'm posting all those links up here. You can grab them here if you want to get them right away. I'm going to send it out in a follow-up email um, to you. That will come tomorrow along with the recording of the webinar. And I want you to remember that the 203K provides one of the best options out there for you for renovation, and Finance of America is your best renovation loan partner. And it all begins with your FAM account executive. So if you do have additional questions, program questions, guideline questions, matrix, you know, things like that, it all begins with your FAM account executive. If you do not have a FAM account executive, you can find one at www.famwholesale.com. And so... Um, William, before we leave, I've got one more question I'm going to give you. And if you have any other questions, type them in there. Um, and if you want to stay on to listen to the Q&A, we're going to do Q&A for probably a couple more minutes, and then we're going to log off. Um, but for those of you who are attending the webinar today, I want to thank you so much for attending the webinar. And I wish you all a very, very um, happy, safe, um, eating frenzy Thanksgiving next week. Enjoy time with your friends and family. So if you want to hop off, you can, but I'm going to go ahead and continue on with some of the questions. So this question, William, is can the 203K be used to do a garage conversion in California? So what are we converting the garage to? Okay, so Richard, that's that's the question. So th those are the so that's the first question is what are you converting the gar the garage to, and not just that, but okay, so yeah. he's saying it's living quarters. Yes, you can. You can actually convert it to living quarters or an ADU. You just couldn't convert it to commercial space. Gotcha. Okay, and again, so those are kind of things to think about. Um, here's kind of a crazy idea. You know, they have the the um, monopoly out for millennials now, and um, so they've changed the names of the things as far as like living in the parents' basement and things like that. So maybe that's a marketing thing. Hey, is your millennial staying with you longer than you thought? Have you considered changing your garage to living quarters? I can help you with it. You know, just simple but kind of out of the box things, that's going to get people's attention and that's a way for you to stand out. So how can you market to your existing database? Who is your existing database? You know, those are the kind of things to think about. 
So I'm not seeing any other questions right now, so we're going to go ahead and close it out. Again, William, thank you so much, thank you, and thank David. you for everyone else for attending. And uh, we will see you after Thanksgiving on the Realtor webinar. So take care. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.